one of these interviews is design exercise. If you're trying to find out how to tackle it, this is the research for you. Because in this video, I'm gonna cover design exercise that you might get in a UX design internship or a full-time job interview, especially a take-home design exercise, design challenge, where you would do it at the comfort of your home at your own pace. We're gonna cover what it is, how to do it, simple questions, and walking you through what you should do, what you should know about it before getting into your next take-home design challenge. Speaking of getting into, let's get into it. Good morning, everyone. My name is Justine. I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. First, context. A take-home design exercise is different from a whiteboarding challenge where you will get in an interview. I put whiteboarding under problem solving and design exercise in design exercise. And whiteboarding is a video for another time. A take home design challenge can take you from three days to one week to complete. In the end, you'll give them a PDF. You got it, right? Pretty simple, right? Of course, it's not that simple. Otherwise, I won't be making this video. Anyways, without further ado, let's dive right into the details and nuances. <sighs> to ace a design challenge, I think it's useful, it's beneficial to go top down, meaning plan the right mindset and then execute. If your mindset is wrong, everything can be wrong. So let's frame design exercise properly by looking at the interviewer's perspective. Imagine you are hiring an intern. There are 200 applicants. How do you filter them? Going through 200 portfolios? Probably. How do you know who's a better designer? When there are group projects in their portfolio, how do you know which part that they own, what do they do, or they just use their teammates' work? Well, one way to help to filter out the applicants is design exercise. Since all applicants are working on the same design problem, it's easy to compare among them. And second, a design challenge is an individual project. So what you produce is what you produce. So the only real way to fail this is that what you produce from a design exercise is not up to the standard. Well, this is the secret. This is the key to a take-home design exercise. What is the standard? We know why companies give us design exercises, but what are they looking for? And that leads us to action item number one. Ask questions about the prompt, get clarity to make sure you understand the problem, the prompt, the same as the hiring manager who is giving you the prompt. Some prompts can be vague and broad. And that's why if you even have slightly, slightly, slightly concern or confusion or question about what are they talking about, shoot them an email. Ask them about what assumptions are valid to make for this prompt. Ask them about, is there a particular area to focus on? Ask them about, am I solving for three types of users or just one? Ask them about, am I solving for four problems or just two of them? Once you have aligned with your hiring manager or the prompt, the next thing you have to get right is the deliverables, which leads us to action item number two. Spend time on visual execution. Visual design, I have to say, I have to reiterate, is one of the key things that a hiring manager is looking for and will be looking for. This is exceptionally true for any consumer facing products. Apple, Airbnb, Pinterest, Snapchat, etc. And I have personal experiences and confirmation from my other peers to back this up. Personally, I have done design exercises for Uber, Yelp, Palantir, Airbnb, and for all of those, I did not pay any attention to the visual execution. I failed all of them. I did not move to the next round. So I iterated myself in Justin B2 when I realized that. I have done another exercise for Apple, another one for Robinhood, where I put so much time on visual execution. You know what? I made it to the next round. Amazing. So this is clearly the biggest thing that I've missed. Maybe it's obvious to you, but it was not for me. And I didn't think that way before because in the prompt, it did not mention about give us pixel perfect UI design flow. Then how would I know? Therefore, the final deliverable for a take home exercise is a very, very, very polished UI visual design in a PDF, not wireframes, not paragraphs of text explaining a product strategy. A friend of mine who used to work at Uber and Google actually confirmed this with me. And also think about it, especially if you are a student or new grad, they want to hire you to help execute their design, their product vision, create detailed UI, interaction flow, and visual design. If they want to hire a strategy person, they can just hire a startup founder or just draft another job post for design strategist. Designers and design strategists are two different roles. They are two different things, completely separate. Designers need to have that craftsmanship, that pixel perfect visual design skills. 
even if you are an interaction designer, you are a UX designer, there is a minimum bar you have to meet. And design size, more or less, to make sure is to showcase that you actually go up past the bar. Not to say flows and problem solvings are not important, they are. Without those, you can still fail the design exercise. Bottom line is, you still have to pass that minimum, that UX standard. The flow needs to be smooth, but shouldn't take up 80% of your time. Visual design will. That's a long one, but hopefully you see how critical this is because I spent so much time talking about this one. It is really a make or break. The next question, how do you make sure you meet the UX standard? How can you create good UX flow but still have and afford the time to do visual design? And that takes us to action item number three. Use standard libraries and patterns. First of all, they save time. As simple as that. Using design standard navigation models and interaction patterns leave you with more time to spend on visual polish. If it's a mobile app design, look at how other apps do it. Maybe, for example, if you need to design a booking system, look at Booking.com, Google Calendar, Expedia, Kayak, etc. Look at the material design guideline from Google. Look at the human interface guideline from Apple. Find the patterns and interaction model that you can use right away. That also showcases you actually understand the patterns and able to use them in the right way. Action item number four, pick the prompt that you can finish quickly. Sometimes you have two prompts to choose from. I used to think, hmm, which prompt should I choose? This one looks more interesting, but I kind of know this one better. Now I have a quick answer. Pick the one that I'm good at, or maybe even the one that I've done before. Pick the one that I can finish in the shortest amount of time. One week is not a lot of time actually, especially if you have homework and other commitments in life. So choosing the one that you're familiar with, that is easy to do for you personally, can do two things. One, it gives you more time to make sure your visual design is good. And second, your previous research, if you have done this before, can ensure that you will have a smooth UX flow for this particular design challenge. A take home exercise is not looking for some groundbreaking, revolutionary design interaction model. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna do that in one week. And picking an interesting prompt it's fun, but it can really suck you into this infinite loop of the exploration phase. You will not get to the final polish state that they are looking for. And that also means you get cut for the lack of polish. No good. Action item number five. All design decisions should have reasons. You should already know this, so I'm gonna go quickly on this one. Make sure you have a reason to put this button here or there, or to make this flow this particular way. This screen is after this screen. Typically in a design exercise, you are not expected to do any user interviews or user testing. But if you magically have time, do some. You're welcome to, it will help. If you don't have any of those, spend some time at least thinking about the test plans. If you were to do some testing to back up your design decisions, how will you test it? How will you verify your decision was right? If you made any assumptions in the process, how do you validate them if you were to do the test? This is something you should know and think about, generally speaking, in your design exercise, in your design practice. And that will actually come pretty handy in the design exercise presentation, which I will cover in another video. If you're still watching, you're awesome. Those five tips, those five action items are actually all from my personal learnings and experiences along the way. Now I'm gonna leave you with some sample questions that I have dealt with or that I know of, such as redesign an app, any app or service, identify an opportunity in XYZ, design a mobile app for WeWork to reserve meeting rooms. I'm not gonna go too detailed in any of these. You can rewind, pause here, go back, take a look. Google more if you like. There are plenty of out there for you to look at, get a sense and practice. Now is the fun one, fun time. My personal hot take for take home exercises, I think they are a waste of time for applicants if they're just looking for visual design skills. If visual design is the main thing they look at, their portfolio should provide enough signal. If their portfolio don't have enough pixel perfect marks and UIs for you to look at, they should just be cut, not move to the next round. That's it, very simple. And you can judge other skills by other interviews. I don't think all of a sudden you can go from low quality polish to high fidelity, beautiful UI and walk up in one week. That's a tough sell for me. So I'm gonna give the same comment to the take home design exercise as my cover letter video. It's ridiculous. Looks ridiculous. If I'm hiring, I will not make you to do a take home design exercise because I think it's ridiculous. That's what I have for today. If you have other questions or thoughts, comment, yeah, leave in the comment section. I read and respond to every comment. 
And here are some related topics I plan to do in future videos. If you have a strong preference of which one you want to see first, simply let me know in the comment section down below. That's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful or insightful, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. This is still a very small channel, so every like counts and I greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content down the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers!